How's it going? So today we're going to look at MongoDB crash course easily and quickly. But before we do that, first a little bit about MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. That means not only SQL. Most of you are familiar with relational databases like SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL. They store data in tables made up of columns and rows. However, MongoDB is a document store database. It stores data as a collection of documents. So let's have a look at an example. We have here a library database that stores the details of borrowers and the books the library owns. This data is stored in a collection. A collection is similar to a table in a relational database. The collection stores data as documents. Look at the documents. They look very similar to JavaScript objects or JSON objects. They're actually BSON objects, which are similar to JSON, but they have some added data types. Let's have a look at MongoDB itself. We're going to start off with MongoDB Compass. This is a graphical user interface to the MongoDB server. It gives us a feel of what the data is like using a graphical user interface. And we have to add a connection string to connect to our server. For the connection string, you need to type in MongoDB colon forward slash forward slash local host colon and the port number by default is 27017 and click on connect and as you can see here by default there are already other databases and you can see these databases just by clicking on them there's nothing in there in these databases and you also have the option, if you so wish, to delete them. What we're going to do is we're going to create our own database. So at the bottom here, we have this Create Database button. We'll give our database a name. So for example, we can call it Shop. And in our database, let's say we have one collection called Items. Click on Create Database. And here is Shop. We can open up shop we can see inside shop there is a collection called item we can create another collection and we can call it inventory and within these collections so we can if we click on shop we've got inventory we've got items and we can see here that we have no data for items let's add some data to our database, click on Add Data. We don't have um, a file, but you can import a file, and you've got two options. You can either import a JSON file, or you can import a CSV file. But what we're going to do is we're gonna insert a document ourselves, and there's two options. One is using this JSON view, and one is using this option, where it's much more easier to add. Let's start off with the name for our product and this is going to be a string product anyway. Uh, so we will call it beans. To add a, another field there's a plus button we need to click on that. This will be price and our price is going to be a very expensive can of beans one pound 25 pence. Now you can see here that it's actually storing it as a string. We can click on that and we can change this to a double. So you can see this is quite straightforward and easy to do. Now, before we added our data, at the top here we've got this underscore ID. This is automatically generated by MongoDB. It gives our object an ID and you can think of this as equivalent to a primary key in a relational database. We've added our data. We can just click on insert and this is now added 
into our database. So from this menu here, if we click on shop, we can see the inventory, which we haven't added any data, and we can see our items collection to which we've already added a can of beans at a price of one pound 25. So you can see that actually this is actually quite easy to use. So that's pretty much it. You can now export this data if you want to and you can see here the selected field that's going to be exported. So these are the fields that you can export. You can add other fields as well. We're going to leave compass here but certainly you can check this out yourself you can experiment with it you can play around with compass it's a very nice graphical user interface it does a lot more things than i've actually shown you we're going to concentrate on the command line which is a lot more powerful it gives you a lot more flexibility as well so i'm going to start up the server and then we will look at what we can do from the command line we've seen in an earlier video on how to install MongoDB and how to install Compass. So really this video is just a carry on from that. Here we have our Mongo shell. So the first thing we need to do is to look at which databases we have on our server. So the command we use is show dbs and we can see here that shop is the one that we created. Admin, config and local, they're the ones uh, that are there by default. Incidentally, uh, on the description, I've got a link to a file that has all the commands and what those commands do. So you will find that quite useful as a cheat sheet. If we want to use the shop database that we created, we just type in use shop. And we can see here that we've now switched over to the shop database and if we want to see what collections we have in this uh, database show collections and we've got two collections inventory and items to clear the screen we can just type in cls and that will clear the screen the database that we've been using was the shop database now if we want to delete a database let's say we want to delete the shop database You've got to use the database first, so we've already used the database, we've already shown that we are using the database. What we next need to do is to type in a command that will actually delete it. So to delete our shop database, just type in db dot drop database, and we can see here that it's dropped, deleted our shop database and to check that it really has been dropped show dbs and we can see that only the three default databases are actually still there to create a new database just use use and then the name of the database so we'll create a database called houses and we can see that it's switched over to houses it's basically created so let's check if this has been created. If we type in show dbs, we can see that it doesn't actually show houses has been created. It has been created, but because there's nothing in there, because there are no collections in there, it won't show up using the show command. Now we're in the database to check which database we're in. You just need to type in db and we can see that we are in houses. So let's uh, create a collection in our houses database. So we'll have db dot create collection, and we'll call our collection address. And we can see here that it says yes, it's been created. One collection has been created. And to check, we can type in show collections. It shows us that uh, address has been created. So let's now add some data, add a document to our address collection. So for this we need to type in db dot, oh, there's an extra dot there, delete that. So we've got db dot address, that's our collection, and we want to insert in there street, 
and our, our street is called Kings Road. The door number is 31 and for date we're going to use the date function which will use the system date and we can just type in enter now and it's telling us yet write result inserted one so our date our document has now been inserted into our date what if we wanted to add more than one document and we can do that by using insert many so I'm going to create a document in using a text file where we're going to have all our data and then we can just paste it in here so we can change this into insert many and when you're inserting more than one document you have to have an array of documents so we need to change or we need to add an extra bracket a square bracket and we need to have a closing square bracket and what I'm going to do I'm going to paste in some more addresses and I'll make a, a few changes as well and we'll discuss them after I've done that and let's say we want to add a, another piece of uh, information let's say category and with category what should we put in we can put in a string that will indicate to us whether the house is new or old well put in old now unlike relational databases we can have extra fields we can even drop fields as well so for example um, here we're going to drop the the date field okay so let's uh, copy and paste this in our command line we'll just uh, clear the screen and we'll and it's showing us that the documents have been inserted and we've got one two three four documents one two three four documents that's worked out if we want to query our database we can just type in db dot addresses dot find and this will show us everything that we have in the address collection it's not easy to read so we can actually make this pretty we'll just clear the screen so to make the addresses more easily readable we can add a method to our find method pretty and that will make it a little bit more readable as you can see now let's say we want to search our database once again we can use the find method but let's say we want to uh, query our database to find all the old houses and to find the old houses it was in catty category old and we just need to press enter and there we are we only had one uh, house that was uh, old and that uh, and that document has turned up and to make it a little bit more readable we can actually tack on the pretty method and that will make it more pretty so it's not pretty that makes it that makes it a bit more readable so so far you've seen that we've been running commands that you would find uh, in SQL in the link that at the bottom where I have more commands you should try them out you should experiment with them MongoDB is very very versatile and it gives you all the commands that you would find in SQL well I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video if you found it useful then don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the bell icon and you will be able to then get notifications every time there's a new video uploaded so thank you very much and have a good day